Hey, what's up everyone? Coach Joey coming in this morning. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk about a, a specific subject related to nutrition and uh, kind of explain how this works. Um, so kind of what I'm going to talk about today is how actually consuming more calories in a sports performance world will actually help you lose weight. So um, typically when, what we've learned over the last you know, 15, 20 years when it comes to nutrition Outside of sedentary people, um, one of the most important numbers for us related to body composition is what's referred to as resting metabolic rate. And what that in the layman's term means is if you were to sit down in a chair for 24 hours, how many calories would you burn over that 24 hours of being inactive? Um, and that's the number that we try to manipulate, which in turn is going to help our body burn fuel more efficiently. And when we talk about fuel, we have fat, carbohydrates, glycogen, uh, so different areas of fuel, protein in a worst case scenario, but that's not what our goals are as, you know, people who stay as active as possible. So how this works and why where most people make their mistake is let somebody, let's say somebody's tw eating 2,400 calories a day. They've been doing that for the last five years. So their metabolic rate is adjusted to that. So that means every hour on the hour, if they're sitting in a chair, they're gonna burn about 100 calories an hour. Now, remember, this is not scientific. This is just numbers that are making this a little bit easier for you to understand. Then that person decides that they wanna lose weight. So what do they do is they, let's say they cut their calories down to 1800 calories. Now, because our body has been adjusted to 2400 calories a day, burning 100 calories an hour, what happens is there's going to be a time period as this kind of comes down, your resting metabolic rate is going to adjust where we have weight loss from here to here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, and everybody gets happy. And then whether it's six weeks, eight weeks, three months, six months, eventually your body will adjust to that and then it'll level out and it'll stop losing weight or getting to burning fat per se as an energy source because your body's going to adjust to the 1800 calories um, a day and then it's no longer going to allow you to do that. So some people in drastic um, cases, they'll drop down even lower. Let's say they go from 1800 to 1200 calories. They lose a little bit more weight. You start getting down in a 1200 calorie range and you're somebody who's trying to stay active, you'll be lethargic. You'll get to a point where you're going to be tired at work. You're not going to want to wake up in the morning. Your body's just not going to feel good. So this is kind of what we want to stay away from when we're talking about weight loss, especially if you're somebody who is, you know, spending time in the gym or who is moderately to highly active um, on a weekly basis. So when I say moderately active, somebody who maybe works out <coughs> three days a week. Now, now that we have that stuck in our head, the next thing we're going to talk about is manipulating our metabolic rate without cutting calories and even increasing the calories. So there's two ways to do that. Um, first way is through nutrition. The second way is through activity or physical activity or exercise, however you want to look at it. So let's say we keep the same number. Um, we're going to use a baseline of 2,400 calories. And let's say we increase that number. So let's say we go to 3,000 calories. Um, we're, we're going to be here. And then as we go up, there might even be a time of weight gain into this position here. But what ends up happening is if you're somebody who trains in the gym, whether it be CrossFit, a regular gym, any type of sport performance, high intensity interval training, P90X, whatever it is, is exercise. What that does is during the time of exercise, you're going to have an increase in your metabolic rate without changing your food. And then the duration of time that you spend there, you'll stay increased. And depending on the type of exercise that you do, it will stay increased as well. So your resting metabolic rate may jump up to 4,000 calories an hour or 4,000 calories or based off of 4,000 calories. Or, and uh, what ends up happening is during that time, your body's going to be efficient in burning fuel, fat, carbohydrates, glycogen stores, the things that are going to help you reach your body composition goals. Now, kind of dialing that in a little bit more. So we talk about exercise and there's, I've done some research on this. I've read some studies. There's, there's some, some publications out there that talk about this, um, comparing something like a steady state cardio to a CrossFit or a high intensity interval training or P90X or whatever the case is. So when we do a steady state cardio, typically what happens to our metabolic rate is it's going to come up over the period of time of exercise and then it's going to come back down and then it's just going to kind of bring us back down to where we are. So let's say you go for an hour run during that hour. You're going to have an increase in a metabolic rate, but then it's going to come back down immediately once you come down. Now, 
this isn't going to be optimal for something like weight loss and body composition goals. Everybody gets a little bit concerned with, I need to do more cardio. What can I do? Should I do fasted cardio in the morning? Should I start running three miles a day or whatever the case is? That doesn't necessarily affect your metabolic rate. Now, I do agree that you're going to burn more calories during the time of exercise, but in the long term of your life, it's not going to increase or have a substantial increase on your metabolic rate. So now we start to talk about things like CrossFit, and I use CrossFit obviously because I'm involved in the CrossFit industry, but any high intensity interval training, Tabatas, a P90X, an Insanity, 100 burpees for time, whatever you could do, sprints, if you go out and instead of running 1600 meters, do 16 100 meter sprints and work to rest ratio, it's gonna fix your metabolic rate different. And typically what happens, it's gonna create a peak in your metabolic rate, it's gonna skyrocket it up. You're getting to get into an anaerobic state of mind, your body's gonna produce some endorphins, you're gonna have that kind of adrenaline rush feeling when you do that kind of workout, and it heightens your metabolic rate. And then what ends up happening is it stays heightened for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on end. So you have a longer period of time where your metabolic rate is gonna stay increased throughout the day. So that's one of the magics of high intensity interval training and there's publications that have been written on this that prove that it peaks and then it slowly comes down. So you may not burn a ton of calories during your workout if you only work out for 10 or 15 minutes. I agree with that. But over the course of the day, you end up burning a lot more calories as a resting metabolic rate sitting down at your job or whatever the case is doing this. Um, so that's one way that you can adjust that. All right. The second way is through nutrition. And one of the best ways to do that is frequency in your eating. Anytime you eat, your, mesting, your metabolic rate has to adjust for the food that it intakes. It has to be able to digest it. It has to be able to process it. So in turn, you have a slight increase in your metabolic rate. Um, so one of the mistakes that people make is they only eat one or two meals a day. Um, let's say you eat 2,400 calories once a day. Well, this is what happens. You're cruising along, you eat, you have a little bit of a spike, you come back down and then for the rest of the day your metabolic rate is going to stay down here and this is why you end up not losing weight it could be healthy it could not be healthy whatever the case is your body will in turn adjust i obviously i don't recommend eating crappy food but so you eat 2400 calories all at once or even if you split it into two maybe once in the morning and once at night it's going to be pretty similar to this so the other way that you can manipulate your metabolic rate is through nutrition frequency two to three hours you have to get to a point where you eat two to three hours what happens when you do that is, let's say your resting metabolic rate is normally 2,400 calories per day. Um, you eat in the morning, your metabolic rate comes up, and then as it starts to come back down, maybe two or three hours go by, boom, you eat again, it comes back up, it starts to come back down, boom, you eat again, it comes back up, it comes back down, boom, you eat again, it comes back down. Now, if you look at this, we're spending a lot more time keeping our resting metabolic rate at a higher level throughout the day. So that's gonna give you an opportunity without even stepping into the gym to manipulate your metabolic rate. Now, obviously, this is broad, simple terms. It's a little bit more in-depth than this, but this kind of stuff works. It's proven, literature is written on it. This isn't something that I'm just making up. This isn't something I came up with either um, by any means, um, but I just wanted to share some of the stuff that you know I work on in my spare time and kind of pass that guy uh, information on to you. Now, like I said, if you guys ever have any questions about any of this stuff, come see me in the gym. But this is a good bit of knowledge that's gonna help you get on track. It's gonna help you perform better in the gym, it's gonna help you with your body composition goals, and it's gonna help you stay on track with your overall fitness goals. All right, you guys, sorry it was a longer video. If you watch it to the end, you get some good information. Coach Joey, CrossFit Ocala, uh, hopefully we'll see you guys this afternoon. If anybody has any questions about anything, you always know where to find me. Have a wonderful day.